Right, so now we're going to explore the house, then whisper your choice to Dan. You may also find a compromise with an additional character if you wish. Dan, where's my notebook? I know I had something good. Tommy, me and Daddy can play Race and Roger. Okay, so this is the notebook. And, <laughs> no it's not. This is the novelist. And... Yeah, we chose to help the wife this time, so we're going to fix their marriage because we kind of think in turn that can help the kid. But the dad really needs to write the book. So what if... Oh, okay. What if today... He... Today, Dan can spend time with his wife and write his book. And tomorrow... Tomorrow he can play with his son. <laughs> I think. Yeah, let's do that. Alright. Where's his notebook? So peaceful. It would probably be a little scary in real life, but it's it's so nice. Just one idea. Thinks about the rest of us. Time together. Okay, see, it's already going to help the marriage. Let's find his notebook here. From the desk of Harold Baxter. January 16th, 1948. This must be his book? Standing in the kitchen, drinking coffee and admiring the view, I simply don't understand it. Who wouldn't want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of 451 Timberline Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house unfurnished. It was just about as quiet as anywhere I've ever been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finish breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. Later. I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy when I saw something odd downstairs. I'm not certain I can describe what it was. And I've already talked myself half way out of thinking it was anything at all. It was probably just a trick of the light coming through those big windows. So this is a previous owner, I would think. And we... Yeah, <laughs> probably saw us. Alright. Uh, do we find the notebook? Am I just not correct in this? How do we compromise? Let's find the notebook. Well, this... This is actually where I would leave the notebook. There. Is it in here? He must have left it, like, downstairs then, or something? Here. From the desk of Harold Baxter. January 15th, 1948. So this is before, right? Mr. Lowry finally gave in and agreed to let me inspect the house. I believe he simply grew tired of hearing me ask, although I think deep down he knows I'm correct. A property like this simply doesn't change hands every year without... A year or two without a reason. I noticed the pattern when I was cleaning out old files, and this house kept coming up. It's changed owners seven times in the last 13 years. I began digging, and not a single one of the sales was financially motivated. People just seemed to keep deciding that they would rather live somewhere else. Which doesn't add up in my mind. The view is striking. The isolation and privacy alone make it a great property. The remoteness can't be an issue. Certainly not no one who can afford this kind of home needs to work for money. It's a mystery, but that's why I'm here. And then he inspected it, saw something downstairs, and talked himself out of it. Noisy fridge. Um, okay, so... I guess... Watch them wake up before I even do anything. That can't happen, right? Okay. Where did he leave his notebook? This is the wife's. He shouldn't have left it in here. Alright, back upstairs we go. This is the boys' room. 
See, we're not selecting Racing Roger. That's something we're not doing this time. Next time, we'll make the kid a priority. This time, he needs to work on his writing a bit, but I can't find his notebook. Where is it? What is this? We've read that. I know I've read that. I didn't mean what is it. I mean, like, can I select it now? I'm gonna be so sad. I might just give up and help the kid or something. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna find it. Just stay there. And the kid, no, he looked in the kitchen. Aha! My word, it was there. I almost looked at that and I thought, no, it's nothing earlier, but... Okay. Like, who wouldn't compromise? Is there a reason you wouldn't? I don't know. Selecting the notebook will choose Dan's compromise for this chapter. You can only select one compromise per chapter. Press escape to continue. Playing or E to choose. I choose it. I've had enough time to think about this. He just wants to work so that he can afford a better life for his family, so... Let's go tell him. Can I whisper to the wife? Or is it, like, done? It's done, right? What did I probably possess? Alright, let's do it. Why is it Creepy. Ah. The next night, Dan surprised Linda by grabbing a bottle of wine and asking her if she wanted to drink it and catch up after they got Tommy to bed. They put on their favourite Miles Tanner record and cuddled on the couch, laughing and catching up on things before stumbling to bed. The summer was off to a good start for them. Ah, See, that's what it's about. Dan spent the next few days forcing his way through scenes he knew weren't good enough just to hit the deadline. But the day before sending the workout, a thought came from nowhere, telling him to check behind the bedroom desk for his notebook. Though he didn't have a chance to rewrite everything, he did have time to type an outline and include it with the package, which smoothed things over with his agent. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Dan's mind was elsewhere when Tommy tried to get his dad to play Racing Roger with him. Linda found Tommy trying to play the game by himself after dinner. She sat down and played a few games with him to cheer him up, but you could tell he really wanted to play with Dan. That's so sad. I'm sorry, Tommy. 